Hello everybody, Chatty CRC back with you here. Welcome to the channel. This is our series on a long range micro plane build featuring the Nano Goblin and running iNav. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put a link up here in the top for the playlist to the entire build list, and you should see that right now. And then I'm going to also put another link right here for all of my iNav adventures that I am working on. During this build series, we're going to go through the complete build of this aircraft. We're going to go through setting up iNav. We're going to be going into the field, testing out the various modes, doing the certain tuning aspects and trimming aspects of an airplane with iNav and get this flying like a dream. So, thanks for watching, and let's get to the video. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is part two of our long range Strix Nano Goblin build. And I've went ahead and done a couple things here. I'll tell you what's going on. Since I already had a Seal Racing F4 Air V2 in here, and all I'm doing is transferring everything over to a new board, cleaning things up, making some modifications, I did a complete dump and of the actual board and copied and pasted that into the new CLI of the new board and entered that in, saved it, so the board is all set up the way that it was before with all of my settings. And so what I did was I plugged in the crossfire. Uh, and went into the receivers tab and made sure that that was wired up correctly and getting power and everything was good with that. Then I went ahead and hooked up uh, the Unify Pro uh, to everything and hooked up Smart Audio and went in to verify that Smart Audio was working off of the board, which is uh, the pin back here where the little white cable is. Probably can't see it from this far away but it is on the PowerPoint spreadsheet that I'll refer to that Chang has on his website so I'll show you that a couple times so that's all good I set that up and everything and it's not in pit mode or anything like that anymore since it's hooked up to smart audio so when we plug in a battery we'll get our flashes on the unify and then it'll both of the power uh, lights will come on the blue and the amber which means that it is now turned on into free mode so we're all good and it's uh, pumping out 25 milliwatts right now on the bench and set to race band one so we can start doing some more work so that's what's going on here right now and I think the next thing I'm gonna do is start thinking about how to get this actually in here and get the servos wired up and everything like that now that I have uh, the video system, as far as the, the wires go for the camera, there's just going to be going to VBAT power and then back here to the video in on the board. So let me get uh, some things set up here and I will be right back. All right, so here is kind of where the rubber meets the road. This is where everything gets a little complicated because this spar gets in the way. And this is what really is great if you have a kit versus the plug and play because you can go ahead and do all this work and then spar all this up and do everything later but that's not an option here so i have wires kind of taped up and held out of place and everywhere and right here is my esc and i have just soldered on the esc wires to the two rear pads right there can zoom in a little bit here so you can see that a little better so while I'm doing that I might as well go ahead and finish off the ESC so since we've passed the point of no return and on the CL racing board the motor connections are actually on the sixth pad up from the bottom which will be one, two, three, four, five, six, right there where I have that single dot. Uh, this ESC does have a ground wire, so I'll go ahead and put a little solder on there and we'll solder up the ground, the ground pad too. Does need tinned a little bit, but 
by doing this so close to the board. Okay, that's good. That is a little long, so I'm going to go ahead and trim that down. And now, it's not going to reach, so pull up the tape here. And move our board back a little bit, tape it back down. I've also been using uh, Silly Putty, or you can use clay, to help hold your boards in place and stuff. I don't find that helping hands are really that helpful when you're in a situation like this. Need to get it a little bit closer. Right about there. Okay, there is our ESC signal. Of course, the ground needs some tin as well. Trim that back a tad. And it's really close to that wire, and this is plastic wire, so I don't want to get going too crazy here so I don't melt it. And boom, done. Okay, I don't know how much of that you could see on camera, but now we have our ESC signal and ground pad, and we have power. So let me go ahead and clean this up a little bit and reset and we'll be right back and see what we're going to work on next. All right, so I think we will go ahead and work on the signal wires for both of the Elevons now. And then after that, we should be able to mount and place the board and then go ahead and wire up this uh, BEC afterwards so I'm gonna go ahead and secure this board a little bit so we have in a fixed wing converse uh, in a fixed wing configuration uh, this wing over here actually this Elevon is going to be number three and this is going to be number four on this side since we're looking at it upside down and when we're looking at the actual pinout of the CL Racing F4 Air board, the second pin out strip right here is going to be number three, and the third one is going to be number four. So I have both of my wires here. I just need to figure out which side they are coming from. So I'll get them off of my silly putty here. So this one over here is number four. And we'll go ahead and do number four first since it's just kind of up there in the way. It's a lot easier just to do this because we're using the back so we don't have to worry about our power 
and everything like that. So I'm going to trim these a little shorter. All right, again, this is number four, and that's going to be the third pad up. And that is going to be on the very top pad here. doesn't want to take there we go number four then number three go ahead and shorten that one up and that is going to go on this header here which is the second header up I'm gonna try not to desolder the one that we just did okay there we go doesn't look like it's a lot cleaner yet but trust me things are a little in a lot better shape than they were beforehand once all this gets tidied up and buttoned up, it'll look a lot better. It's still hard, and it's still going to be kind of a rat's nest, but not impossible. Be right back. All right, this will probably be a good place to stop here for the night, because I really don't want to rush this build. Got plenty of rain coming for the next couple days. But one thing I did want to say is I did put a video up on this and you might want to check it out but one thing that I am very concerned about is cooling everything and what I have been doing is making air scoops out of plastic spoons so it's real easy to do you just cut the spoons you can cut them to any size that you want they take paint very well you can see they create a perfectly nice funnel ramjet whatever you want to call it and I've installed one right here on the top that I am going to be using to drive air into the ship and it should be going right over the unify and keeping help uh, keeping the unify cool so that's a good little uh, trick that I picked up from somebody and going to be implementing that all over the ship here in a couple different spots to try to keep everything as cool air coming in and creating outlets for it to get out so that's going to be it for part two guys we will see you on the next video